Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. We've been getting a lot of requests on our tree swallow houses. So today I'm going to show you exactly how we do it step by step. There's no way you can mess this thing up, folks. You can do this. Um, we use eastern red cedar, and that's because that's what we have. Uh, you know, we have our own sawmill now, so I can saw out uh, cedar out of what normally would have went in a brush pile. We're making tree swallow houses out of them now. And so we've got uh, one by sixes. Cedar will last a long time. Don't use a wood that's gonna rot out in one or two years. You know, it takes a little time to put these together. And you don't wanna set it out in the elements and then have it rot. Get a, get a wood that'll, that'll last a long time. Uh, this is a good one, cedar. I, I really like the Eastern red cedar. If you can find some of that. Uh, we're going to be having some of this for sale because we've got our own sawmill now. We're going to be sawing it. But it does take, you know, one by sixes. And I'm going to show you exactly how we do it. It's really pretty cool. And, you know, it's a cool day today. It's muddy outside. You can't do too much. So Jan and I are building birdhouses, as you can see. Uh, over here in this pile, we, I go ahead and cut out. We've got about 350 houses there, all cut out. All the parts are already cut. And... Uh, we use a, you know, just a, a, a saw to get those cut out, and uh, it's really nice just to be able to grab the pieces and put it together. But here's, here's the deal. So the board dimensions, you're going to need four one by sixes, nine inches long. Those are the sides and the roof, which is these parts right here. This is the roof, and these are the sides and the front. That's the cool thing about this, folks, is four of the boards are nine inches. They're all the same. Okay, four one by six is nine inches, and then the bottom of the birdhouse is this little guy down here. This is the one by four, it's five and three quarter inches long, that makes up your bottom. And then you need one one by six, 13 and a half inches long, that's the back. Okay, that's what the whole birdhouse is, is mounted to. And then this back, of course, will go on your pole, whatever you decide to use as your mounting pole out in your pasture. Okay. So we're going to go through this step by step how we built this thing. Now, I did pre-drill the holes because I didn't want the drill running while we're making this video because you can't hear me. Um, but here on the side, you can see we made a little, a little deal here. And I wanted to make sure you all realize there is a vent here. See this? See that hole right there? That's that vent. So when you screw this one on, you make sure that you bring it down and the this right here on each side it, all there is is the screw there folks that is the hinge pull out the nail and i use galvanized i didn't have any but you need a 10 what they call a 10 galvanized this is a 16 it's too long you want a 10 okay and so you just grab a hold of it isn't that cool done so it's hinging on these two screws and those screws come in at about the inch level, the inch mark at the top of that board. And that's another one of those one by sixes, nine inches long. Isn't that cool? So you can reach in there, pull your nest out in the spring, spray it with Clorox and put it back in. Put your latch back on. And I'm going to show you how we do that. We, we drill a hole in there at an angle and I'm going to explain that. Uh, I think that's it. So the, the, the most tricky part is getting started. Which boards do you put on first? Well, we drew this out so there's no, there's no messing this up. You take your front and you take the other side, not where the hinge is. I'm sorry, not where the vent is. It's the back side, so it would be, it would be this side here. So watch this. Okay, so <clears throat> I've got a side. And I've got the front. The hole's already drilled in there. Folks, that is a one and three eighths bit. Like this. Okay. And I did learn a trick on that. I'm going to show you all in a minute. Don't put this on your birdhouse without the hole drilled. Okay. I, it's been a long time since I've built any of these. And we got, I don't know, we got 20 birdhouses over here put together. I didn't drill the hole in them. Now I've got to go in and drill them, but I, I found a really quick way. I'm going to show you how to drill holes quick, okay? Uh, and you see how centered it is? <laughs> I didn't get it centered very well. 
that's all right the birds won't care uh, we do use a two inch these are two inch deck screws they are painted they got a coating on them don't use a plain steel screw it'll rust you want a coated screw and we use the hex the six-sided the six-sided screws don't get a Phillips head on there it's gonna strip you want the hex okay and so I just I've already got these holes pre-drilled I just to save some time and noise so you set that on there okay make sure it's flush grab your stud setter okay got my first piece put on okay now I'm gonna put this vent okay I've got my vent here and because I didn't mark it there it is right there okay so on this side I'm only gonna put one screw in yeah. this is my vent right here and so I've got a gap right there that is three-eighths of an inch it could be a half inch it doesn't three-eighths to a half inch it doesn't matter that measurements not that important except for you need some air going through there then little tree swall is gonna get hot in there they gotta have some gotta have some airflow okay got that one in all right now we've got that part done we're gonna do the bottom so this is the bottom piece this is the one by four okay so make sure I put it in there right there we go like that same deal I do have the holes already pre-drilled just for this demonstration there they are here's my stud setter set it on there like that like that okay now my bottom's in so now I'm gonna put the top on the birdhouse so your top you just take your finger because this is going to be the back this is what the 13 inch 13 and a half piece is so you take your finger make sure it's flush on that side and you only put two screws in right here and these two screws are actually going in this facial board it's got the hole in it they're going down through it okay so I'm ready to put my stud setter on there okay there we go so now now we got the top on it and now I'm gonna fasten it to my bottom now on the bottom I wrote that on there that's one and three quarter inches what that means is this birdhouse is going to be mounted one and three quarter inches and what this does folks is it gives you room to put a screw on the top and the bottom when you mount it on your pole everybody tracking okay now I didn't pre-drill the back because we didn't have the birdhouse again so there is going to be a little noise here you're going to have to excuse me so get this get this flat so I've got the hole is flat on the surface the mark is underneath I look underneath there there it is just line up this face right here okay I've got that flush and now I'm going to go ahead and counter drill all my holes in one one pass and this is a three six I'm sorry this is a one eighth inch bit and you need one that is it's two and three eighths inches long two and three eighths inches so what I do is I just come in here So I drill them all in one follow swoop then I just come through here and I just set my screws in because they're all pre-drilled just put your screws in there and you know you can you you can try using a pneumatic nail gun I will warn you it will crack your wood if it's seasoned like this is and so we're using screws in pre-drilling folks I've got birdhouses out there that are 17 years old and they're still performing if I'm going to go through the process of, of getting my wood, drilling the holes, putting the thing together, I want it to last 20 years. 
I don't want to put it out there and find it rotted and, you know, the, 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 the little nails came out that you put in these pneumatic drivers. It'd be faster, but is it going to last? Probably not. By golly, these screws will. So, we're going to... Explain your screws. Why did you put where you did? Well, first of all, the, the two top screws are going into the roof. Okay? So, that's, that's, that makes your roof solid. These two are going down the fixed side. This one is in the bottom of the birdhouse. So, now I've got three screws holding my bottom together. And then this one over here is for my hinge on the other side. Before I put that in, I'm going to show you. But let me go ahead and drive these. And you don't need to get you don't need to get crazy countersinking it really deep down into the wood. All you're asking it to do is crack. I stop when I get flush. Don't give it that other turn. There it is. Okay, there's the bottom. Now here's the tricky one. So here's my hinge. Now on this one, when I go in, stop. Don't countersink that because you're going to squash it together and then your hinge won't turn very well. So watch this. So there's my hinge. There it is. Okay. Now I've only got one thing left to do and I'm done with this birdhouse and that is turn it up on its side. Okay, so here's the bottom facing down. And I'm going to put my latch in. So here's my, here's my uh, eighth inch drill bit. You go at an angle because you, you want your nail to go down into there. Okay. And this should be galvanized. It's not. But you get the idea. That's too long, by the way. That is a 16. You need a 10. A ten what they call a 10D. Okay. And now we've only got one thing left to do. And uh, that's to put vents in the bottom of the birdhouse. This is a quarter inch bit. The reason you put those vent holes in the bottom like that is when the birds poop and pee and stuff in there, all that stuff has a way to get out of there. Okay, and then on this side, there is no venting. So I'm going to put two over here. And, you know, you don't have to measure them perfectly, but don't put it down in the nest. The nest is going to be down in here. You don't want to vent right in the nest. Put it above the nest up in this area. Okay. Um, we're done. Because you got a vent over here. you got the vents in the bottom. Of course, you got a vent through the hole. Folks, when it gets hot in the summertime, those little birds can get hot in there. So you got you got to get some vents. Um, I wish I had dr <laughs> drilled that hole more centered, but I didn't. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The birds, the birds don't care. And now I'm going to show you the trick to drill and pre-drill these before you mount them on the birdhouse. And the way you do that is you take a tape measure, stack up a whole bunch of fronts. So these are the front parts of the birdhouse. Okay, that's two and a half inches down. And then over this way, it's uh, two and yeah, it's almost two and seven eighths. And so you just get your bit. Give me a minute to put my bit in. This is my one and three eighths. That's what we use. And tighten that dude up. And lay it down on a board that you can drill into. So these are scrap boards down here at the bottom too. You don't want to drill that bit into that concrete. Okay. So I stand on it. If you had a drill press, it would be pretty slick too, but I don't. Just get your uh, bit started like that. Just keep drilling. And all this drill material, uh, Jan already pointed out, this makes wonderful, wonderful bedding for dog houses. Fleas can't take cedar, folks. It's really nice, good, warm bedding. So keep your chips for your dogs. Or if you got horses, you can put it in your horse stall or whatever. But see what I just did? I just drilled four fronts with one pass. Folks, if you 
mount these on like we did over here. I'll get them. It's just going to take me a little more work. But see, it makes such a nice clean, makes such a nice clean hole. Look at that. My God, those are centered. That's because I measured them. <laughs> so we've got some fronts now to build some more houses. Um, when you mount these, when you mount these on a pole, make sure. Yeah, hey, where's my washer set? When you when you put your screw on here or bolt, whatever you decide to do it, put a pretty good size washer on your bolt or nut, or your bolt or your screw. Otherwise, if that board cracks and you just got a little bitty head on there, this thing could fall off the post. Washers are cheap. You know, use probably, I would use at least a one inch washer. You've got room there to do it, bottom and top. But see, isn't that slick? I mean, I've got me a nice hand hold there. So in the springtime, I can come along, grab a hold of that, pull out my nest, spray it down, put that back on, put my nail back on, galvanized, don't use steel. This is just a coated 16 penny nail I couldn't find. I don't have any galvan. We're gonna go buy a couple pounds of them, but make sure you use a galvanized nail. You don't want rust building up here on your birdhouse. But folks, that is a really cool way of, of controlling flies on your cattle. One adult pair of tree swallows eats 8,000 flies per day. Those flies are sucking the blood out of your cows. Use nature. Don't go out there and pour all this crap on their back or put these back rubs in. Because whatever you do, petroleum-wise, on those cattle or your sheep, it's going to end up out in the soil and you've taken a manure path that was the most valuable asset on your farm and you've turned it into a liability there's nothing going to eat it because you put that crap on the cow to get rid of the flies and this mineral they sell that i forgot the name of the stuff in it it's supposed to keep the flies out you're killing your manure paths don't do that don't do that all you're doing is going broke because you've taken a manure pile that could have grown more grass and you're not getting anything out of it. It's not even breaking down. The worm's not even eating it. You don't want to do that. Use birds. The other thing about these, they draw in bluebirds. And you will get some house sparrows. I'm not, but the further you put these away from buildings, if you put them right up next to your barn, you're going to have a, there's a lot better chance you're going to have a uh, sparrow in there. Face them south, out in the field. They, I'm sorry, southeast. They like to go southeast, the opening does. And they need to be, I like to put mine about six feet. I've got some of them up to eight feet. You can drive a steel post, uh, whatever kind of post you decide. Some people are using a conduit. They're just bolting them onto a piece of conduit. Some people are using PVC. You drive your steel post, you mount this to your PVC pipe. The PVC pipe slides down over your post. Folks, that's a pretty good birdhouse stand, okay? So I love these. We've got 450 out. We've got another 350 cut out here for this winter. So we're going to be up to uh, 450 and 300 at seven. We're going to be up to 800 birdhouses this coming spring. I'm excited. We've got areas on our farm, so we need more birdhouses. Build it and they will come. That's right. But check your range for tree swallows before you go out and do this. If you live in Texas or maybe further west, go to tree swallow. Just Google it and find out where their home range is. Make sure you're in their area before you get building a bunch of these. But you know, the bluebirds, I've seen as many as eight bluebirds fly out of one of these on a cold winter morning. So don't clean your birdhouse out in the fall. Don't do that. Leave that nest in there. The bluebirds will go in there at night and they can stay warm. I've seen eight. Eight bluebirds fly out of one house on a really cold morning. The reason you want to clean that nest out in the spring, though, is there's little mites. There's mites from the previous year living in that nest. And if you don't take that old nest out and spray it down with Clorox water, I use one cup of Clorox to two gallons of warm water. Just shake it up, get your spray bottle, pull the nest out and spray that. The mites are done. If you don't clean it out, the tree swallows will come in there and lay their new nest in there. The baby birds, right when they get ready to hatch, the mites migrate up to the nest and suck the blood out of them. Dead. You might as well not even put them up because all you're doing is killing tree swallows. You don't want to do that. 
Clean them out. In Missouri, it's February 28th. Don't wait too late into March because they send out scouts. They're looking for a place to set up shop. You need to have them cleaned and ready for the new recipients, okay? Um, I think that's about it. Oh, no, we covered that. That's about it, folks. Use a good wood. It's rot proof. Um, I think that's all I can tell you on that. And uh, I think we're good to go. This is Greg Judy signing off. Everyone have a great time and go build you some tree soil houses and suck the blood. Those, suck, those blood sucking flies can go eating somewhere else. Or if they come on your farm, guess what? They're food for your tree soils. Thank you all.